It's been so long ago since I read it. I have I have four books like this. This one all falling apart from all the notes and stuff I took in it since 1980. 1979, 1980, but it's uh, but it's 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 intense. So go ahead. What you said? What you want to say? Mm -hmm. So, can everybody commit to reading that? The introduction? Yeah. And we're going to fall behind on this class. So, essentially what he's talking about, and <laughs> it's going to be hard for you to see it in there, but as we move forward, you'll see it. He's going he's gonna to get us another name. Spirit, which is really Shiva. Okay? And spirit forms the soul, right? And the soul is going to be, is going to form consciousness, right? So that you can understand, you can have, as you see it, plays out, play out. Get my eraser. Do you have an eraser? I don't see my eraser here. The soul's going to form consciousness, okay? And then this consciousness is going to be bodiless. He mentions that in there, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so, and then 
the soul moves forward to create a body for the bodiless consciousness. I wish somebody had did this for me 30 some years ago, <laughs> which they didn't. But is these are the keys to understanding this. Now, it's going to get off track because when he started talking about this, what's the, uh, we, we can look at the table of contents so you can see. Look at the table of contents. I might have read it off maybe before I got this. So the bodyless consciousness. Uh-huh. Embodied consciousness. Uh-huh. Mantra. And then mantra, right? Yep. The center of lotuses. But that's all we need to get to is mantra. So you have it creates you have a bodyless consciousness, then it creates the consciousness, it creates the body, right? So that becomes the what? Embodied consciousness, right? Mm -hmm. And then he goes into mantra. You say, why he goes into mantra? <laughs> but he goes into mantra because of why? Anyone know why? Because sound is consciousness, right? And what does sound do? It helps build the chakras. Huh? It helps build the chakras. It doesn't build the ch chakras, but it builds a casing around the chakras. Because the chakras are what? What are the chakras? That you're going to learn in this. It's not, it's the centers of energies, but it's what? It's realms of existence. So it, so in other words, it taps into the cosmos. It links this, this gross, these gross components of matter back to the cosmos. And I think so many people misses this. Because that's what it does. It, 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 he, when, when he, he describes, he, des he only describes seven chakras. Really, he only talks about six. Right? And it's the base chakra, the mulahara, right? And it's the sex chakra. The solar plexus, the heart chakra, the throat chakra, and we're using English terminology. We don't want to get into the Sanskrit. Then the Christ chakra and the crown. So he goes into it in a sense where he explained each one of these chakras. But in order to get here, what needed to happen was this. Shiva or the spirit actually had to create a soul. I know most people don't want to hear that. <laughs> involved, involved itself, so. Huh? Yeah. Most people don't want to hear that the soul was manifested or created. But yes, the soul was created. You know? The, the only real you is spirit which is the divine spark of God. That's the only real you. So the spirit had to create 
a body in which it works through in order to experience uh, manifestation because the spirit is unmanifested. It's at the level of God, of the absolute. So it's totally unmanifested. Because why? Because it's everything and everywhere all at once. So in order to, in order to become manifested, it, it have to create something that it can work through to tunnel its vision or, or, or to limit its awareness. And that's where the soul come about. See? So, so, so it creates the soul, and then the soul itself still have this connection to the spirit. It's, it's, and the spirit is, 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 uh, is omnipotent, is, is, is everlasting. It has, it has all awareness. So the soul still can tap into this tremendous power and knowledge of God, you know, in, a, in almost an unlimited fashion. So the goal is, is to bring about basic manifestation. And that's a directive from the spirit or from God. So what does the soul do? The soul creates a consciousness, which is a bodiless type consciousness. Because see, the soul is above consciousness itself because it's connected to the all and all, the spirit. So when the soul uh, creates the consciousness, the soul moves forward to embody the consciousness. So it has to create a body. And it creates the, the it, it creates the org body, right? <coughs> and this org body uh, becomes the first body, embody, uh, the first embodiment of the soul or the consciousness itself, the consciousness that the soul created for itself. And from there, it has to create uh, etheric counterparts within the auric body, right? So within that auric body, it begins to manipulate the great creative shati power that's throughout the universe, right? And what does it do? It pulls on that shati power to do what? Anyone remember? Huh? It pushes it down Shushunna, right? And Shushunna is what we consider the base of the spine, but it's actually a great holy uh, a position in the universe called the what? Anyone? The Brahmanati. In other words, the Brahma flow of energy, all right? The great supreme flow of energy, divine energy. So what happens is that the soul pushes this Shati power and pushes it into a Brahmic state of, of, of a flow of power. That means it's pure. It's absolutely pure. It's guarded. Is, is, is created, is, it flows in a way that is totally unexcrupted. And it flows in a full, it, 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 flow, it, it flows in a whole manner. In other words, what does this mean? Not, not matter, yeah, matter, matter or matter. The matter or the cosmic energy of it is whole. In other words, when it flows, it flows with all the Shati power intact. The whole of the Shati power is flowing in one screen. And what does this mean? That means that it's totally balanced. You have the positive and the negative. That's what and it's the, flowing or that's what it's 
Yeah. That's when it's in the Brahmanati. And you have the the uh the and you have the negative and positive equally balanced. It's equally balanced when it flows in this pure state of of uh of Brahmanati, right? So it's whole. And that means that it's it's totally aware of everything. It's connected to everything. It's so balanced that it can it can mold and shape into anything it needs to mold and shape into. And this is at the base of the spine. No, it's not at the base of the spine. Okay. No, this is going. This is traveling through the 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 brahmanati that moves through. <coughs> it's, it has to come down through here through the crown chakra and goes down. But there's, within this, the theme that links this is Shushunna, right? Okay? But within Shushunna, at least three layers within Shushunna is the Brahmanati. Now, Nati only means flow of energy or flow of shakti power, okay? So, so what happens is that when, when the soul grabs this, this shakti power and pushes the shakti power downwards, it's the, low, the, the lower it goes, the grosser it becomes. This is gross. And this is fine, or etheric fine almost. So at this point, it's up here, and it pushes it down through. Now, each one of these are levels of, of, of realms of existence and levels of consciousness, right? And when it pushes it through this protected barrier, the Brahmanati that's within the Shushunna, it forms, it comes down here, and when it comes down here, this is where it splits. By, by now, it's at a gross level of existence, and it splits into at least three parts. Okay? And two of those parts are released. and they travel up and back through each chakra level. One part of it is split, but is never released, and it's blocked. And the door to it is blocked, which is the door of Brahma of the Brahmanati is blocked until a key is given to unlock it. Now, this energy travels up to each. It's a positive energy and a negative energy. You have a positive energy and a negative energy. And then the energy is renamed. The positive energy is Pengata in Sanskrit terms, and the negative energy is Ida. And it's called the Ida Pengala Nati, the flow of energy, and the Ida Nati, the negative flow of energy. It's a vital. Energy is Pengala, which is the vital energy you feel in your body. And the negative energy, which is, which is uh, Ida, is the mental energy you feel in your body. Now, when, when, the, energy, when, the, when, the, when the energy falls into this state, it splits and it goes into a dormant state. Okay, that dormant state is called Kundalini.
That's why when you hear Kundalini, you hear about it's a dormant state. Now, it's also the vehicle of consciousness for the body because it's a vital life force of the body, right? But what has happened, it went into a dormant state and it's, it's, uh, it splits and the, the parts of it begin to look for some type of equilibrium. So the positive side of the energy, Pangala, it rushes up to the sex center to try to connect with its opposite, Ida, and they cross. They cross at each point. And they, and they cross at least seven times at these points. No, not seven times. At least 21 times at each point. They cross it. They cross. And that brings about a state of consciousness, a realm of existence for us to operate on. It creates a major chakra within, within our body, a major, a major center of consciousness and energy within our body to operate from. And it continues this until it reaches the, the Christ center, where at that point, it finds some type of equilibrium to work from. Of course, the Christ center is the command center that regulates all energy. In actuality, there is no connection here to the crown center. Because Ida and Pangala actually terminates here. And it is there where everything is connected back downwards, in a yeah, sense. It's a command center, right? Yeah, it's a command center. The Christ center is the command center. See, and it's there where your sensory perception is open up to the world. And we'll go into it if we, if we can get into this book. You have the Tamantras, you have, it gives you not only five senses, but it gives you the 10 senses <laughs> that's actually, that man actually have. Man has, has more than five senses. And it goes into it in detail. And from there, you're, you're, of course you can see into this world, into this physical world. You can smell into this physical world, and you can, and you can taste, you can feel into, in this physical world. Because why? Because the energy originated here, and consciousness resides within the physical, within the base and the sex center. That's where our consciousness resides at. Now, of course, we have higher states of consciousness in the other parts of the body, but we haven't really tapped into them. And we just began to try to tap into them in the last, probably in the last 50 to 60 years. Everything that we have created on this earth is what? I mean, the components of energy, the, comp the, the things that we, that we uh, use, it has a what? Duality. It has a duality. <laughs> it has a male and female type way of doing things. And it also, it, also re it also have us to destroy in order to bring about energy. You know, we burn things up. We destroy something and take the energy out of it. You know, and and that's a resort of the state of consciousness of, you know, where we at. You know, that's, you know, that's a resort. That's where our mind works. Our mind works uh, through, you know, you know, through doing that. And when you, you know, even, even uh, we, we mimic our bodies, in other words. We mimic, we mimic our state of being. You know, we know that in order to create a family, extend our family or our, or our genes, then we have to come together with the opposite sex and we have to produce a child. 
But in producing that child, we actually uh, uh, put a lot of age and, te and we tear down the body of our mate you know, in order to give life to that, to that child, you know, but the, but the, but the thing about it is that uh, the body naturally prepares the female for that, you know, for the, you know, for the entry because everything, everything begins to work properly and in most cases, you know. Uh, and, and especially if we take the right frame of mind and doing, you know, during that time. If we don't, then it can be disastrous. But, but we, but that's where our frame of mind is. So when we go out into the world, if I want to, if I want to bring electricity uh, or, or bring power to an instrument, I got to take a male plug and stick it into a female receptacle. <laughs> and everything we work, we go to crank our cars as a key, a male key being inserted into ignition, and then it turns out is everything works like that, you know. Even if we just taking our finger and pushing a button, <laughs> you know, there is is always like that. That's where our frame of mind is, and our frame of mind is that we have to destroy. We have to take raw material and. and and, and break it down in order to pull the energy out of it. Because why? Because we eat uh, raw material <laughs> and cook material, <laughs> and we digest it and we pull the energy out of it, and we throw the waste away. You know, because that's where, that's where our, our, our frame of mind is, that's where our body is. But as we develop ourselves and move beyond that, we'll be able to tap into a higher stream of energy without tearing everything down. We just transmute that energy to a different energy level in order to work with. Now we're doing that on a very basic level and we're causing a lot of side effects by doing it. So that's, the, that's, uh, that's basically the beginning. Did I miss anything? Do you, anything else I need to talk about on that? That's basically, if you if you if, if you can remember if you can remember those points, that's what he's talking about. He's not going to say spirit. He's not going to say soul, but he's going to say shiva, which is spirit. He's going to say shati, which is the power, uh, which is the, the the power behind shati is the soul. Okay. Uh, he's not going to say. Uh, uh, Christ Center, he's going to use the Sanskrit terminology for that. Just broke it down. I mean, yeah. Right now, in the, in the, uh, on the website, I have a, that's still up there, right? It's, it's, it's on, it's on YouTube, it's on uh, Meetup and the website, the dictionary, the, the, the glossary. I put a glossary in there that you can refer back to, mm -hmm. to give you a greater meaning of it when you're reading it. Your first read, if you haven't been coming here for years, your first read of this is going to, you're going to get discouraged because you're not going to recognize a lot of the terminology. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you're going to, and if you, if you can't, if you can't, you know, just go through the introduction. If you can't get to the bodiless consciousness, Go ahead, we, we can go over that. Java, it only means embodiment, con embodied consciousness. When, you, when he's, he's going to say the word Java in there a lot on the, on the second chapter, it only means uh, uh, embodied consciousness. Instead of, he's going to say, he's going to, uh, I think that's how he do it. For shati. Sometimes we say shati, sometimes we refer to it as He's going to take the H out of this. We spell it like this, or at least I do. He's going to take the H out of that. On a lot of Sanskrit words, they take the H out. Back then, in the late 1800s, early 1900s, they would take the H out of Sanskrit words. Huh? So what do you use the H under 
They don't. Oh, they don't. Okay. So they just take it out. Yeah, maybe during certain words. Okay. Yeah, but uh, later on, later on, most Sanskrit uh, writers uh, corrected that in a sense and put the H in. Okay. They take the H out of a lot of Sanskrit words. I think this is, yeah, he does it like this. Or like that. Or, or is it like that? Yeah, it's like that. Either off or like this or with the S. But this is the way I do it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They were like unsophisticated when it came to that. And yeah. Back to the wife and kids. All right, yeah. Okay. So, so that's that. I mean, is it'll be really interesting when we really get into it. Huh? I said, I'm glad you go over it again and again because sometimes like every time you go over it again, mm -hmm. you pick up a couple of nuggets. Oh, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. It makes sense more and more every time. Mm -hmm. So, is there any other questions? So we're only going to cover circuit, certain circuits of power here, and you're responsible. We're going to double up two phases. Yeah, in the morning and Thursday. I'm sorry. In the morning and, th and Thursday. Sunday morning. And oh, okay. Thursday. Yeah. No, it's just that um, the ones on Thursdays also say daytime. Did you notice the timing? On the schedule. Does it? Yeah. yeah, this is a mistake. Yeah, it's a mistake. So that's why I was oh. like, that has to be a joke because we're it's not, not 730 in the morning service. It's not, it's the, that's not on Meetup, is it? No, it's only on the... Yeah, on yeah, that was just a mistake on the... Yeah, so, okay, so you're... That was a draft that y'all was supposed to modify. <laughs> <laughs> I'll fix it then. That's yeah, that was a draft. But I think I might have corrected that now, but... Because okay. Lucinda, because Lucinda and Janelle and Lucinda called me up to modify it. But on the meetup, it says at night. It says nighttime. Okay. We, on the meetup, we need to put invitation only or something like that because it's, it's limited seating. Okay. All right. So. And you're going to. Well, I don't think we've ever had on, on Thursdays, though, that a lot of people that we get. There's only a few people that come for the 12 blessings, and, you know. Right. And we would walk past inside. Exactly where the same place yeah. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure if we did yeah. it inside. We could do it inside the thing, too. It depends on how many people there. Oh, okay. Well, we, have a, we have that thing next month, right? It's right around the corner. In October, yeah. Month? October 24th or something like that. Yeah, that's like a month and a half. That's, that's the weekend. Go ahead. Uh, so also, will a short analysis of the Sakta doctrine of power be of value? Um, all that is manifest is power, Sakti, as mind, life, and matter. Power implies a power holder, Sakti mind. 
There is no power holder without power, or power without power holder. The power holder is Siva. Power is Sakti, the great mother of the universe. There is no Siva without Sakti, or Sakti without Siva. The two, as they are in themselves, are one. They are each being, consciousness, and bliss. These, are, these three terms are chosen to denote ultimate reality, because being, or isness, is distinguished from particular forms of being, cannot be thought away. To be, again, is to be conscious. And lastly, perfect being consciousness is the whole, and a limited, unconstrained being is bliss. These three terms stand for the ultimate creative reality as it is in itself. By the imposition upon these terms of name, nama, and form, rupa, or mind and matter, we have limited being consciousness and bliss, which is the universe. What then of power, then, wait, what then of power when there is no universe? It is the power to be, to self-conserve and resist change. In evolution, it is power to become and to change. And in its manifestation as forms, it is a material cause. It is as material cause, the changeful becoming the world. Becoming does not equal God, for it is finite form, and he is the formless infinite. But the essence of these forms is infinite power, which equals infinite power holder. It is he who puts forth power and creates the universe. Rest implies activity, and activity implies rest. Behind all activity, there is a static background. Siva represents the static aspect of reality, and Sakti, the moving aspect. The two, as they are in themselves, are one. All is real, both changeless and changeful. Maya is not in this system illusion, but is in the concise words of the Sakta Sattha, that's, that's her word, the form of the formless. The world is its form, and those forms are therefore real. Man is then, as to his essence, the static power holder, or Siva, who is pure consciousness and as mind and body, he is the manifestation of Siva's power, or Sakti, or mother. He is thus Siva Sakti. He is, as he stands, an expression of power. The object of Satana, or worship and yoga, is to raise this power to its perfect expression, which is perfect in the sense of unlimited experience. One mode of so doing is the yoga he described, whereby man exchanges his limited or worldly experience for that which is unlimited, full, Bruna, or perfect bliss. In, a, in a Cosmic Voice Volume 2, uh, Master Theories actually puts that whole thing in like two sentences. Mm -hmm. I, was like, I was really, when I, when I read that part, I was like, well, that kind of, that kind of blew me away. When I saw how Master Theories kind of was, he was talking about how man is complete. Both his male and female aspect, like two or two or three sentences. Mm -hmm. But all of that is exactly what he was talking about. Mm -hmm. Y'all don't understand what he was talking about, right? Okay, you know what comes out. Twenty three. Okay. Yeah, let me let me put it in simple terms. He talked about sit, right? Right? Mm -hmm. This is mine. He talked about where well, that's how that's how you pronounced it. Yeah, yeah. He right. Like the H. right? But it's really shati. Yeah. Okay. And this is power. He talked about Shiva, right? Right? Yeah. And this is this is uh, spirit or God, right? God or spirit. He calls it control. Yeah. All right. And then he mentioned it a little bit, but he didn't go into it. He talked about Rutra, right? Mm -hmm. Right? So he was talking about this is the power or the control behind mind, 
and then m this control in mind shapes the universal power or the, 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 the whole mother of the universe, which is Shati, right? And then there's a reality here, and in this reality, there's no, uh, there's no Maya, right? We know what Maya is, right? Huh? Illusion. I don't know how many S's it go. But so, but this power is limitless. But to every form, and I'm sure there's different stages of this. You know, it goes up and up and up and up, right? There's, there's, uh, you know, they create their own illusion. It's almost, it's almost as though if, if, I had a, if I had a telescope, right, and, and, and I could see what's going on around me right here, right, and all for some reason I want to limit my perspective, I put the telescope to my eye, and now I can only see what's, you know, what's through the lenses of that telescope. So my perception of my true environment is limited for that moment. So when we take on form, you know, we're limited in what we can see, what we can do, where we can go. We're really limited. We limit ourselves, you know. It was a long thing to go through to get. It's much more there, but, <laughs> yeah. but that's the crux of what he's saying, right? So, but remember back then they, uh, I don't know, they had limited, and then we had the benefit of having the their society teachings if you really study them deeply. And a lot of other teachings too. But all of this is the background of our form, of the basic form that we take. And behind that basic form is is a lot of uh, uh, energy that we don't use. You had a question, Dwayne? Huh? The question is, what forces on Earth and within our solar system is, are responsible for human consciousness? That's the question online. Well, when did they tap in? I, I answer that over and over. Yeah. I mean, mine is universal. The same mind we use on this part of the universe, on this part of the galaxy, can be used on the other side of the galaxy. Is mine is mine is a universal energy, and it's the way the soul configures that mind that places us at the level of consciousness we're at, and that's taking that consciousness and pushing it through each chakra, and we and we know that in the major chakras the that positive and negative energy have to be intersected 21 times, and um and uh. In a in a minor in a minor psychic center, it crosses 14 times. In a minute uh, psychic center, it crosses seven times. We understand that. We know we know that. And it's the energy level. It's the energy in that chakra we can use and mold and shape into consciousness. Or or does mold? It does build consciousness. But consciousness is everywhere. It's just like what he stated here. You know, it doesn't matter whether you have a form or not, this still exists. <laughs> you know, this universal state of consciousness exists, this universal uh, power exists, and then the power that's at rest behind this and this still exists, which is Shiva. 
So you always need a background. And even in science, in basic science, they use that same uh, concept. They always test the background of something wherever that event is going. They examine the background, you know. That's why you get, you, they go and do what's the background radiation of that, of that area, wherever that event went on. And background yeah. radiation is everywhere. It's everywhere. Right now we have background radiation here, it doesn't yeah. matter where you are. Yeah. And it's not bad, radiation is everywhere. Yeah. Like, know the difference between that, like, it's a big deal. Yeah, I mean, it's because everything is what? Oxidizing. Everything is, you know, in fact, uh, oxygen is lethal <laughs> under certain conditions. You know, oxygen tears something up. It, 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 uh, it wipes things out, in a sense. In other words, it puts a time factor to it, you know. So. Yeah. Uh, Lucinda, Janelle, Jenna, and Al, okay. and, and my mother. They don't need to be here if that scared them away. <laughs> Say we not governed by by Democrat or Republican. I know. When I was in college, there was one girl, and Nelson Mandela came to town, and he made out that thing with the tech couple. The one girl was in a class with the I mean, a Jewish girl. I mean, she was so angry. He refused to denounce Arafat. And that's when Della refused to criticize Arafat. You know, of course, they didn't even want to give him the key to the city of Miami, the mayor at the time. Mm -hmm. There was a whole big affair about that. But this girl couldn't get over it. I mean, she was my teammate on a project we were working on. And they didn't give him the key until almost he died. They didn't offer to give it to him. Oh, it's Miami, right? Yeah, yeah. Miami, yeah, because of that. <laughs> 